still ugly. <coughs> Hi, uh, let me welcome uh, Matthias Runge. Uh, he's a software engineer at Red Hat, and he will tell us a bit about web applications using Django and AngularJS. Thank you very much. Um, in the next few minutes, uh, for, first of all, welcome to my talk. Um, I'm glad I see all of you here on a Sunday afternoon after a long uh, week and so on. So um, this is just to be intended as a introduction, uh, touching many, many, many talk topics or many, many buzzwords. Uh, I guess naming all those buzzwords is the reason why I was selected to be presenting here. Um, it's not to be meant as a deep dive into anything. So if if you would like to see something like that. I would suggest to save your time and leave. Um, so, first of all, I, I would introduce, like, to introduce you to, to the terminology and just describe where we are, um, what we are talking about, and uh, what's the problem description. So, um, first of all, um, you, does any one of you have um, experience with something like OpenStack? Awesome. <laughs> any, any one of you have experience with Django? One, two, three. oh, great. Anyone experience with Angular? Great as well. Um, so um, OpenStack is a project to um, provide you infrastructure as a service, like you're able to um, click on a button and get a virtual machine somewhere running. <coughs> Horizon is the project I'm working on, is the um, web front end for OpenStack. So you could click in your Horizon onto that button and get a instance. I'm also a Fedora contributor, RDO contributor, and I'm maintainer on uh, Red Hat OpenStack packages and so on. Um, so, most of you should be knowing we are talking about browsers, we are talking about web servers, we are talking about Whiskey, which, which is the interface binding your Jam Django in your web server. And we are talking about client-side scripting. Um, this, in OpenStack Horizon, this somehow changed. We, we've been a um, Django-only project, and OpenStack is very, very Python-centric, I'd say. Welcome. Take a seat. <clears throat> um, so. As you all have heard already about um, Django, I'll just throw the slides in. It's still a fastly evolving project with some interesting changes in for the for the next few versions. Um, doing a bit uh, a short detour, I already mentioned um, OpenStack Horizon. It is a Whiskey application running in um, mostly Apache HTTP. It is implemented in Python as it uses Django. And originally we were or more something like two projects. Um, first one was a, um, it's not interesting. 
No worries. Do you want a scarf? <laughs> so I'm sorry, I cannot sell them. Um, Horizon um, is being made of two uh, Python applications. One is named Horizon and it's currently the framework to implement a dashboard to Impl or it's, it's the d um, framework to implement a dashboard for OpenStack dashboard. And OpenStack dashboard itself is, is, is the implementation. It has been part of OpenStack since probably ever. It's, it's not entirely true, but it's, it's been integrated in OpenStack for a long, long time. And as I mentioned before, it's the, the end user interface for OpenStack dashboard. Unlike other um, Django applications, it is completely stateless and it doesn't use a database. So it, everything is stored somewhere else. And it exclusively talks to um, underlying services using a RESTful API. Um, I mentioned before, Horizon is um, the dashboard for OpenStack, and you could do something like launch instances, um, manipulate your um, system images, you could attach, create volumes like um, com comparable to a hard disk, you could manipulate um, network configurations and so on, or um, even launch um, databases if you're using the database um, project in OpenStack. So, Django provides you um, a whole bunch of tools useful for creating something like a dashboard or a web, web application, like, like it takes care of authenticating your users. It's even pluggable, as we will see uh, in the next slide. You have features like a built-in admin uh, site, which is not used at all in um, OpenStack. Um, as you don't, uh, in, come on. Um, as we don't use a dat database adapter in OpenStack, uh, we don't need the uh, um, function in uh, Django for this. We'll have a short look at the um, template engine afterwards. And as I mentioned, it's uh, extendable. And I'll explain you how. So you could um, plug in your user, user authentication by re-implementing specific uh, methods. And um, the way OpenStack uses it is, is um, it provides you a user object um, that user object is authenticated against OpenStack Keystone, which is the authentication and authorization um, project within uh, OpenStack. And uh, the user object is created at login time and destroyed afterwards. And you, you just get a, a token uh, from Keystone, which is used to get all the data. And um, it's also used for permission checks, like is my user um, allowed to do this or that? What is the role of, of my user? Um, and so on. As I'm lucky and you all are familiar with um, templates in Django, um, I don't need to explain this. Um, it briefly describes how to interact with um, templates or how to provide templates. You just sub submit or um, provide a, a template in um, a, something like an HTML template and um, Django will fill in values and fill in uh, variables in there. Um, AngularJS is um, front end only. So we talked um, until now about um, server side. Now we are talking about uh, front end side. 
and Angular is just one pick. There are many, many other frameworks, even more pep popular uh, frameworks than Angular. Uh, but at, at the time we were talking about integrating something like client-side scripting, um, it seemed to be the most obvious thing to integrate Angular. So it's a, something like an application framework maintained by Google. We basically have two somehow competing versions, like 1.x is in production, and it's a pure JavaScript implementation. Um, version 2 is in beta since, well, at least since we are talking about this. And it uses something named TypeScript, which is a superset of uh, JavaScript, so nobody, n no browser can understand it directly, and you need to compile this. Um, I'm not being sure about how smart this is. So, a implement, uh, um, application in um, Angular could look like this one, pretty ugly um, source code. Um, so, how does it work? Since it's Sunday afternoon, um, it looks like this one here, and you could type in something like uh, give a talk, and it directly adds, even if you can't read this, uh, it directly adds it, and it's pure client side. You could even strike it through. Wow. Okay. Previously, I just showed you the um, template in HTML, and if you're spotting a bit nearer, you could see the double curlies, and the double curlies are also used by Django. So if you're going to mix both Angular and Django, this will hurt you. Um, the JavaScript for this, just f uh, for completeness, um, is... Um, I shouldn't explain this one. So, um, <laughs> as I mentioned before, the templates both share double curlies. You could redefine um, the um, template tags for Angular um, with this kind of ugly hack I mentioned uh, on the bottom of the slide. Um, if you're doing this and using additional plugins or um, additional um, packages for Angular, this will going to hurt you as well because those plugins are, or um, additional libraries will expect the double curlies and not something else you defined. So either you are going to change that source code as well or you should be smart and do something else. So, we had Django and we had Angular and how to mix both together. Um, there are some useful libraries uh, producing or creating um, directly REST APIs from your uh, Django models. Um, the first three of them are just to be mentioned. I have a demo for the first one um, the last library is not for creating something like a um, RESTful API. It, it's like something like a proof of concept or something which is currently evolving qu uh, quite fast um, to add something like asynchronous features to Django. It currently does not provide something like this. It adds something like HTTP2 to Django, it's currently agnostic of, of that. So I just thought I should put up a, I'm sorry, a sh short blogging app uh, application. It will give you something like um, a short title, a summary, and 
something like a full text or whatever. It's nothing really um, astonishing. Um, so you, you're basically putting this um, to your models in, uh, in your Django app. If you're mixing in um, the REST framework, there's a, a bit of code to write in, um, in, the, in your URL specification. And you're basically describing how to serialize your models into something consumable by, by REST or uh, how, how to describe a JSON. And you could even, so basically what I'm specifying here is um, which model to serialize and which fields to display in that uh, JSON. Um, and at the rest, I'm just um, describing um, what to view and where to view this. So back to the demo. If you're just using this in uh, Django, it's nothing really. Um, I, I, I ju just did, did a quick demo and pu um, just put out the um, subjects. So if looking at what we get from um, REST API, this is just what I, um, the code, oh, nobody can read it. This is something uh, be, uh, you could easily pull in via um, API, in, in this case via REST. And um, you get even the um, URL to access the um, objects stored in the database. Um, you could even use this to pull, pull the uh, contents of that uh, data out. And finally, If you're put, putting in the um, Angular, uh, no, sorry, the um, Django admin um, interface, uh, you could add something uh, like a new um, object, so something like fill in the title, uh, summary, and so on. So no nothing really interesting. Um, so get, getting back and uh, pulling um, the data out with um, Angular, provides you most basically the same uh, we had with a with um, Django before. Um, it's quite compact code and um, nothing really um, interesting. So going going back, this is how your implementation would look like if you are using pure Angular or pure Django. So in OpenStack Horizon, just to set the terms straight, we have something, oh, do I have a, we have something oh, like a dashboard and this is the project stuff we, we were hitting here, hiding here. Um, this is something we, we are named a, dashbo a dashboard. Um, the hierarchy below this, what you see, a compute or network overview and so on, those are named panels. I already outlined um, how Horizon and OpenStack dashboard fit together. So, um, as I mentioned, OpenStack uses lots of APIs. So this is just a small window of every API you have in OpenStack. So it's, it seemed to be reasonable to directly talk to those APIs via um, some kind of um, JavaScript. Um, since we already have some code, we created a way how to, uh, to extend Horizon, something like 
you could plug in a Python module or even a um, Angular, no, a, a, something like a Python model. And, and if you're using a Python module, you could even um, ship static files like, a, um, like um, Angular code within that. So we separated um, the Python module and the um, Python module and the configuration into um, various bits. The idea is you could even package it up for like RPM. So you're just putting in somewhere your Python module like a pure Python package and you just drop in that here ena named enabled file uh, in a specific or specified directory and Horizon will put, uh, pull up this uh, automatically. Um, specified here is the name of the panel would be my panel. Um, it would be put in into the dashboard named identity and um, in the um, section uh, add panel there's also um, the um, Python module named um, in there. And um, if you're requiring uh, to add something like to your um, Django um, um, applications, uh, that would be uh, my plugin in this case. And the way how static files like um, images, uh, JavaScripts, and so on are handled in Horizon are they are just directly placed in the um, uh, folder where you have your um, uh, Python package and Django will discover those files automatically and copy them to a, specific, a specified place. There's even a undocumented feature um, if you're um, running uh, this command named uh, collect uh, files, if you're um, appending the um, parameter dash L, it will create links instead of uh, copy the files, which is um, quite neat. So if you're going to create something like a plugin for Horizon, you will end up in creating something like this. Um, in this case, the plugin would be named user and you would probably have something like forms, a panel, HTML files somewhere located in templates. Um, if you would be distributing some static files, you would be placing them in, in a folder named static and so on. Um, so it's not that different from uh, what you would expect from a pure um, Django uh, implementation. Um, as I stated earlier, we, we are using the framework named Horizon to implement all that stuff. So we are inheriting much of, their function, of that functionality already. So to describe something like a panel, it does not take more than those five lines of code if you're just doing this. Um, even URL routing is uh, going to be pluggable in this case. And um, just to put out uh, something like a um, HTML file, uh, you would inherit um, a, a view and uh, direct your template to whatever you, you want. So it might look like in this case, it's just taken from the um, Horizon um, upstream documentation. Um, so you're basically extending uh, blocks and um, yeah, as the docs are predefined in the base HTML file described in the um, OpenStack dashboard uh, templates um, directory. If you're adding something like JavaScript content, 
be sure to run collect static, otherwise you get interesting results, I say. Um, since um, that Angular stuff within Horizon is still quite in flux, um, I just put in here some uh, links to example ex um, implementations. It somehow tends to change upstream how to implement and where to put files. Um, so they differ a bit. Uh, and we are still um, somehow undecided how to do it best. So we are, we are implementing something and trying to learn from, from this. Um, but we'll see. So, quite quick one. Um, what we did not cover yet is how to test what you implemented. Upstream we've seen um, there are several ways to break everything and um, tests tend not to be what you think they are testing. Um, especially if you're talking to APIs defined somewhere else. Um, if you're testing something and you're expecting those URLs not to change, well, you have a problem. Um, as if you're integrating this uh, kind of stuff, um, you might see uh, something changed. So we also don't cover how to check for consistency if you're um, adding content to Horizon. Um, you could put in something like a, a plugin. There are no consistency checks to, to see if this fits to the upstream style. Um, there are no naming checks, of course. And currently there is no way for upstream horizon to check if your plugin is, uh, does what it's supposed to do. Um, we also did not cover how to package something like a plugin. It's just a Python package, but I, I didn't cover it here. And um, since JavaScript frameworks are evolving that fast. Um, if I would start a new project, I would probably be looking at something else or at least do some more re research about um, uh, that kind of frameworks. And um, that's it. Okay, I guess I saved you 20 minutes of your lifetime. Um, Thank you. Do you have any questions? <coughs> Who wants a scarf? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Good question. Um, I'd say it's a bit historic. Um, since Horizon was primarily a Django project. Uh, we had that um, meetup upstream where some guys approached us and said, well, either we are going to re-implement everything else or we are going to fork you um, or you are going to adopt. So, and those guys were doing stuff in Angular. So what do you do? Are you splitting the community? Are you? <laughs> this is why um, it was taken. So other than that, no real reason. I, I know there are other frameworks uh, doing a great job as well. So are you sure you don't want a scarf? Uh, I already <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Open 
So the question is, how do I deal with um, authentication or other database um, accesses in OpenStack Horizon? And the answer is, I'm creating all objects needed at runtime. So if I, I'm creating something like a user, I'm uh, creating this by integrating in, into the authentication stack. I'm directly talking to OpenStack Keystone, which does the authentication, and I'm creating a user object, object when I need it. And the same is true. So, and Keystone provides me a list of other API endpoints I'm allowed to talk to. So uh, what about sessions? How do I keep track of sessions? Um, so I'm basically, in my case, I'm um, keeping sessions somewhere else, like in memcached, Redis, or whatever. This is why I don't need to care about uh, database migrations, for example. Do you want a scarf? <laughs> so, yeah. hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please. So the question is how Angular JS and, uh, and jQuery relate to each other. So basically both are uh, client side scripts and I would expect, I, I, would, I would just use Angular instead of that jQuery. Yeah. So, so um, for example, um, Angular has uh, neat features like um, it does um, form validation at client side, so you get directly a feedback. On the other side, you need to Im uh, implement those checks twice. <laughs> Depends what you like. Do you want a scarf? <laughs> Who wants another scarf? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so um, the implementation or um, implementation of everything client side kept us busy for the last one one and a half years, and over that time we also d um, discovered we were doing a quite bad job in matching other projects in OpenStack. We, we just talked about managing uh, virtual machines, um, managing volumes, managing network. But um, OpenStack has much more like um, managing DNS, managing containers, uh, managing databases. Actually, we, we have something like um, um, support for data, databases as a service in Horizon, but it's very very basic. We, we also have something like uh, support for um, uh, Hadoop. But we don't really match everything we have in OpenStack. And since we are doing such a bad job, we were extending or moving to that plugin model to enable other projects to implement their own dashboards. Of course, so, so it's just adding something like a um, enabled file and adding th that uh, or pointing horizon to your Python module um, just plugs in your um, dashboard. We still need to um, support something like domain scope tokens in horizon we currently do, uh, don't do. So I need 
to make a bigger detour about this. So maybe we should discuss it afterwards. So, well, so, um, if you're going to Keystone and getting a token, seriously, <laughs> um, y your token is currently scoped to your project. And you could rescope your token to use a, a different um, a project. But if you're using a backend or uh, hierarchical um, tenants like um, or multiple domains in your keystone, it's a keystone setting. We currently uh, match that in Horizon at all. Horizon just uses a project sco scope token unlike all other projects in uh, OpenStack. So this will be something we need to address uh, in the near future. We, we cannot manage, um, so the, the way projects are set up are, you are a user and you have a project, but that project cannot Actually, in, in OpenStack it can, but in Horizon it cannot have a super lying project or something like in a, in a hierarchy. So we, we have no real cue currently how to display this to the end user. It somehow falls down to um, how to do inheritance of um, roles and so on. Of course, this is defined from Keystone, but still we need to display the user what you can do. Okay, yes. Uh, if you could uh, choose to personally send out this paper for this horizon, what would it be and why? Would it still be the Angular or would you choose something else? Mm. I would probably look, for example, at uh, something like Polymer, which seems to be the new pig in the... In the future. Pardon? In the future, Polymer. Yeah, but... So, uh, currently we... Un until Angular 2 is not stable, we have some kind of grace period, but if we are going to rewrite everything, yeah. <laughs> it, it makes sense to look at something else, maybe. But uh, I'm just one single guy in the project and it's a project, project decision. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> no. Well, last year I had the request of 
about not taping me on video. I was just ignored. So why should I do you that favor right now? Huh? So video video videotaping something like a workshop is nonsense. Looking forward. I always dress like this. <laughs> my, my closet is nothing but these two jeans. My phone. Actually, there there is a photo from 2013, I believe, that you are photobobbing our photo of oh three people. I? Yeah. Nice. Hey, <laughs> it's it's so Okay. 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 Banana somewhere too. Can you hand me? Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. so if somebody asks asks a question, would you please repeat it for the? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll do questions if you want. Yeah. 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 If somebody asks a question, we can give him a start. Okay, yeah, just kind of toss it yeah, out? Yeah, sure. All right. Oh, there it is. I see.
a little. Do you have a little mouse pointer thing? Yeah, it's there. I, I have the pie. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I can. Yeah.